right guys, just working on a quick little project here, nothing crazy. I'm actually making a turbo screen. So what I did was I purchased some stainless steel mesh material. This was $8. And the reason I did this, I was too cheap to spend the $40 on a turbo screen. I just thought it was ridiculous for what it was. So I figured I'd make one for $8. This is what I come up with. All we do is take this screen, wrap it around the uh, turbo inlet, hose clamp, tighten it down, done. Very simple. So if you guys are cheap like me, and uh, you do a little street driving like I'm doing, you definitely want to have a little protection there. Now I did have one, it was a prototype one, I guess you'd call it. So I made one out of a much smaller mesh. So as you can see here, I'm gonna pull this one off. This one is much tighter. I'm not sure if there's any benefit to it. I figured I was just gonna go with the the uh, wider mesh just because um, get lots a little more air through obviously but uh, either way I don't think either of these are restricting so just a little tip if you guys are on a budget and you're doing something like this and I know it's kind of silly to uh, you know cheap out and something like that but I also don't like on the real turbo guards how large the actual actual mesh is it's pretty large diameter so I want to do something a little uh, a little smaller because I do drive this uh, quite often uh, around town and everything. So that's my solution for that. And I just want to share that with you guys. We got our new gate springs in. We pulled out the last spring, which actually was 5.8 PSI. So now we're going to be running 13 PSI with both these springs in here. So we're just going to toss these in and we're going to let her eat. So I just took it for a spin and once that it got warm, the engine got warm more, my AFR shot way down. So I was at 9 PSI, I was running like 
10. So I'm not sure if before our engine just, or we weren't just getting hot enough. Cause I did, I did leave the fans off this time. Uh, cause the fans kind of actually overcool, um, a little bit on this car. So I just put in the other spring and we're going to see how this does. Uh, it might be too lean, but we'll see now that it's all warmed up. So we'll be running 13 PSI right now. we interrupt our regularly scheduled program to bring you more scrapyard adventures. This came up this morning, I had my fingers crossed, and you're gonna find out, along with me, if we have some gold in this. So this is an E34, and as you know, all these oil pans are used on 24 valve swaps, and we have it in the car. Let's see what else. Look at that too. We got an M50 intake manifold as well. Ah, uh, this is awesome. All right, we're gonna pull these parts off right now. So this came up this morning on the local LKQ website and uh, car is actually in not bad shape. But this came up this morning and I was, you know, just browsing uh, while I was eating breakfast and I saw it and I said, oh man, I gotta go check this out. It's worth the three bucks to go in and see, uh, see if it's got the oil pan still on it because as you guys know these bring a, a good amount of money so I'm gonna pull this off I'm probably gonna widen it and uh, just try to flip it resell it and same with the intake manifold I'll probably just wind up selling that too but pretty awesome pretty awesome deal here so all right we're gonna get busy what's up buddy yeah, give me two. Uh, not one that'll take wheels off. Yeah. I don't. Hold on. You forget them all, man. Call them all. Well, guys, we have to get a little more dramatic. We got our intake manifold, but I need to do some cutting to get this oil pan off. And Laz is sawzall that I borrowed. It appears the brushes on the motor are smoked. So I went out and grabbed my angle grinder. So we're gonna have to <laughs> see if we can use a few cutting wheels and get this thing off. So it's gonna be a little interesting, but. We're gonna get it done. Well, what a bitch that turned out to be. So without a sawzall, I had to freaking really get creative here with ratchet straps and everything. But the engine is 
the subframe is away from the motor, the oil pan should. Feels like there's one bolt holding it on. Right. Yeah, I forgot one of the bolts in the back. All right. There we go, guys. E34 pan. I just grabbed the whole pump. See if they say anything about that. If not, I'll just pull the pickup off and tell them to keep it. And it's been real. I got our dipstick in there. Now, it's time to see what happens when we drop this motor because I need my ratchet strap back. Operation was a success. Now, the bad part is I was hoping to have that done much faster. So I'm into this thing like three and a half hours now, which kind of sucks, but I'll make 400 bucks on this deal. So, I mean, it's well worth, well worth the time, but I was hoping to get in and out of here in an hour and a half, two hours, but this uh, pulling this motor or having to raise this motor up and pull the subframe and all that wound up being all the work. So fun stuff at the junkyard boys.